The family law field is different from other legal fields. It is an area that is trying to create a legal basis for solving a problem between people in a relationship. Uh, the relationship issue is one that the courts struggle with. It is much better for a couple to try and work out their problem. It will be much more likely to suit what they want to happen, suit their needs, suit their family, suit their children. And it's more likely to work if they can work it out between themselves. My experience of family law goes back an awful long time. Uh, when I started doing family law, every divorce person had to appear in a witness box and give evidence to a judge as to why they should be given a divorce. Obviously things have changed somewhat since then, but the combative attitude about divorce is still there in many people's minds. So if you find a, a method of resolving those issues without the courts allowing the couple to become in combat with each other, to have a dispute with each other, but to address those issues in a much more family orientated way, because it's their family they're dealing with, then that's got a chance of being much more successful. And that's what mediation's about really, of saying to a couple, okay, you've got issues, that's why you're talking together and with a mediator, but if you can actually try to move on from that, address those issues, come to a solution that works for you both, why let somebody else tell you what to happen with your family or with your money or more importantly with your children? And so if I can be part of that exercise of enabling a couple to find that solution, it's incredibly rewarding and much better for those I'm trying to help. Today I have been to court because one of my specialisms is to represent children and I am representing now three children in a family, they're eight, six and three. When the three-year-old was born, unfortunately the parents uh, were in difficulties in their relationship and in fact they separated. And that means that the youngest boy, in fact, has never lived with his father. But sadly, and the reason I was in court is because the father has not seen the boys now for about two years, three years maybe. And my mediation background immediately picks up on why then has this not really been spoken about in much more detail in mediation sessions? I understand that the husband, father, applied to the court, uh, having uh, approached a mediator, uh, his wife did not attend that meeting. She attended another meeting and uh, the mediator apparently uh, did not feel it was a case suitable for mediation. But the classic scenario was in court today that this man had been asked to send fortnightly letters to his children. Anybody can see that a working man might find it difficult to word letters that are interpreted by a three-year-old, a six-year-old, an eight-year-old, particularly as he has not lived with a three-year-old he hasn't seen all three of the children for over three years, or two years. And it was a situation where I was able to speak with both parents today. And because I represent the children, I have certain latitude in talking to different parties in a case, which if I was a lawyer for the father or the mother, I might not have. And it was screaming out for communication. Communication between the mother and the father and vice versa. Not communication about the time of day or their relationship, the welfare of their children. And in fact, if that communication had taken place, 
probably the months of waiting in this application. This application was issued about July of last year. The court had a report in November of last year, it recommended certain things be tried and there was an order in December of last year. And here we are in April and really nothing's happened other than he's tried to put some words together. His wife criticises how he writes his letters and he needs some help. But he doesn't know what to put in there. And the outcome today is that the two parents are going to email each other about what they understand is going on with the boys. For instance, the eldest is beginning to be a gymnast, for instance. The, the middle one is, wants to be an astrophysicist at the age of six, and he likes stars. But that simple information will mean he'll be able to put something in writing to his children that they can hook on to as, oh, dad is interested in me, because he hasn't seen them for so long. They don't believe he is. And that level of communication is what has been missed out in that case for months and months. And when you think about the youngest, the three-year-old, actually he's missed it his whole life. We're talking about a child having never experienced his father's affection for him. And so think back. At the start of that, I'm saying what should happen is that the issue about that communication should have been addressed in a mediation session. It may have been difficult. It may have been difficult for him to understand why it is his wife is not a fan of his at all. But they would have come round to understanding, actually you're only here because your children should expect you to be here. You are both parents. You are both holding responsibility for caring for those three children, whether you're living with them or not. And therefore you should work it out. And that's why mediation has a key role.